Hey, what is up guys? Klaus next here. I am one week away from my competition, so I thought what better time to give you guys a training vlog and a training update. So the last time I gave you guys an update video, I had just decided I was gonna compete. Now, I didn't originally know that I was gonna be competing this June when I made my training blocks. So the day that I made that video, I was still planning on finishing my strength block. And then I didn't really know, you know, kind of the end of that block and then the training day, how I was supposed to bridge that gap. So I've been doing a bit of research into how to taper before a competition. So I kind of, I was trying to figure out how to end my strength block and proceed into my competition day. And it's very like, uh, I didn't really know what I was doing. This was a bit of a new experience for me, but it was kind of fun. It was exciting. I like to make workout programs and I like to plan. So it's been a bit of a fun experience for me to learn some new things. And the best part about like test running workout programs is that I can just be my own guinea pig. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You know, nothing to lose. I can just test run programs on myself. It's kind of like running little experiments month after month. So anyways, as you guys know, my training blocks are four weeks. Three of those weeks are undulating and they vary in intensity. And then the fourth week is a deload. Now, because of the timing of my competition, I had to actually cut my deload week and go right into tapering weeks. So I was kind of nervous about that because I knew that I was, you know, due for a deload week at that time, but I just kind of kept pushing through it. And instead of taking a week kind of not off, but like significantly less than I'm used to, I just kind of started tweaking with volume, but leaving intensity where it was. Now this is kind of the nature of tapering. So what is tapering? Tapering varies depending on what sport you're planning on competing in. There's taping for running, there's taping for bodybuilding, there's taping for powerlifting, and there's tapering for strongman. Now tapering for strongman and powerlifting are very similar, so I was able to kind of pull information from both of those streams. So what tapering is, is to get your body ready for competition day. So on competition day, you don't want to be drained from your training, but you also want to be performing at your best. So in your tapering weeks, I've learned that you're supposed to cut your volume down while you keep your intensity high. That means you're still lifting heavy weights. You just might not do it as much or you cut out other exercises in your workout. So I was only really doing maybe four or five exercises a workout and I've been cutting that down. You know, every workout, take one accessory exercise up, one more accessory exercise up. So my workouts are pretty much like two sports specific exercises. So I'll do an overhead press and a deadlift that's it. And it still takes me a long time because I still got those long rest periods. I'm still lifting heavy weights. So now I'm not doing chest dips or dumbbell press or pull-ups or anything like that anymore. Now I'm just sticking to what I'm going to be doing on competition day, except now I'm doing it two, three times a week instead of once a week. My body has never been used to deadlifting twice a week. It's never been used to heavy overpressing twice a week. So it's been an interesting experience also just learning a little bit more about my body and what I can handle. So I kind of did like a three week taper. So that means that your volume is going down over the three weeks, but your intensity is staying high. So that as you get down right into your competition day, your intensity is still at the level that it should be. But the fatigue over the weeks, the fatigue that your body has taken on from, you know, all the high level workouts is fairly low so you're able to be at your best on your competition day that's just that's the plan at least obviously there's a lot of other factors that come in on competition day like how hot the sun is you know how my mind is messing with me and anxiety and like all these other components to entering a competition but at least fatigue is something that we have somewhat control over so i think it's been going pretty well i've hit some prs and i'm gonna save my prs and my strength gains for maybe a little bit later on in the summer because I still plan on continuing with my strongman training. Then maybe I'll do a final strength update video maybe near the end of summer, early fall. On that note, as far as I know of, I'm just doing strongman training this summer. I know that there's possibly one more competition in August that I might do. That's a bit of a bigger competition than the one I'm doing. This one is like beginners, noobs only kind of thing. But the one in August is not so much like that. It's a little bit more well known. So it's not gonna be like a first timers, but I'm fairly certain there will be a novice. There's another competition in August. I, I'm just, I've thought about it. I'm not really sure. So I know that there's one for sure happening in August, one potentially happening in August. And I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna compete in either of them. The answer is probably yes. As for the football season, I know that I made a video saying one more season, but even since that video, uh, it's kind of been up in the air as to whether or not that's gonna happen. And that's because there's just been a bit of a, an issue with coaching staff not being able to 
staff enough teams for the league to happen. So for a while there, it looked like this season wasn't going to happen again, but now it looks like they've kind of solved the coaching problem. So there's probably going to be a season. So as you guys know, I'm very much someone who likes to be mentally prepared for the future. I like to mentally plan. So when I can't envision something, I can't mentally prepare for something, I struggle in my head. So I really hope that something more solid comes out soon. If the football season is happening, I'm gonna continue my strongman training this summer and I'm gonna try and merge kind of into the football season right into the fall. At that point, I'm probably going to stop strength training and just kind of do maintenance training maybe once or twice a week during the season, hopefully once a week. Okay, and the last thing I wanted to talk about in this video is supplements. I'm not a huge supplement guy. I'm very much a believer that you should get the, the nutrients you need from the things that you eat. But I do take protein powder when I know I'm not getting enough meat and I know that I'm going into a heavy workout where my muscles need a lot of extra help. And I also take pre-workout before my workouts because I'm usually working out after a long shift or when my energy levels are the depending factor on whether I work out or not, I take pre-workout. But I was kind of worried about how competition day was gonna go because it's gonna be like, okay, first event is gonna be an axle bar, clean and press for as many reps as you can do in one minute. Now I'm gonna go all out for that minute, 100%, everything I got for that one minute. But then the 10 other men have to also do that one minute. Then the 10 other women also have to do that one minute. That's already like over 20 minutes of just reps, not even including setup between competitors. So we're looking at like 30 to 40 minutes between events. So I know that like, if I were to take pre-workout before my first event, I'd be super charged up, do that one thing, wait 40 minutes, and then I would have a caffeine crash and I would be dead for the other three, four events. So that's no good, pre-workouts out of the picture. So I was considering well, what would be the best thing to have on competition day? I was kind of thinking, well, there probably BCAs or creatine. I know the BCAs support muscle recovery and protein synthesis, and it would kind of delay my fatigue, but I also know that creatine encourages and Im improves energy and ATP production. So after a bit of research, I decided to go with creatine. This is the second time that I've used creatine in my life. The first time was when I was getting into the health and fitness industry. I didn't really know what creatine did. I just knew that like fit people use supplements, so I bought it and I kind of didn't really use it right. I didn't know what I was doing, but now I do. So I'm gonna be taking one scoop of creatine every day until the competition to get my body used to having it in its system, get used to the energy production levels, try and prime my body for uh, optimal energy production the day of the comp. Also, I ended up getting something called Carbolin. So I'm gonna be using Carbolin the day of the competition. Uh, what it is, is pretty much just liquid carbs. It's 50 grams of carbs per scoop, which is, you know, that's quite a bit of carbs and 200 calories a scoop. Not that I'm really worried about calories on that day. But uh, basically what this is gonna do, uh, with coupled with uh, creatine, is that immediately following the first event, I'm gonna take a scoop of this stuff, drink 50 grams of liquid carbs, and by the time my next event, you know, 30, 40 minutes later, uh, this will have kicked in and my energy levels should kind of return to where they were. Carbs kind of have a negative stigma, but if you're an athlete, you know, that there's really no better energy source for your competition day than carbs. Carbs are like your best friend. So since there's only four events happening that day, I'm probably gonna have about four scoops, maybe five. But like, if I'm feeling really energized and charged up, I'm probably not, you know, I'm gonna feel it out, see what my body wants, what it needs, and kind of go with that. And then after this competition, I'm gonna stop taking these. I'm not a huge believer that you need supplements to live an active, healthy, fit lifestyle. I'm purely doing this to get myself competition ready and to just not burn out on competition day because that would truly be a waste of my potential. So tomorrow's Sunday, which means I have exactly one week until my competition, which is next Sunday. So I'm finishing my workouts this week. Today, uh, Saturday, I actually have my last really heavy workout. Then I'm giving myself a week where I'm not doing any kind of heavy lifting before the comp. Today I'm doing some overhead press, some hex bar deadlifts, some cleans, and some hammer curls at very high intensity. The volume is kind of tweaked down. I'm probably going to be doing like a three by three. And then next week I'm going to be doing one more strongman workout with the actual equipment I'm using because I only have access to that equipment once a week, but I'm not going to be going at the weights I usually go at. I'm going to be going at probably, I'd like to say 50%, but that's kind of hard to do strongman. So it's probably going to be around 70%. And then I'm going to do one or two workouts before my call just kind of going through the motions at weight that I don't particularly struggle with just to kind of stay fresh keep the rust off so that on competition day I'm gonna be firing in all cylinders 
ready to go. That's gonna do it for this update video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. You can be sure that I'm gonna be putting videos up of competition day. Stay tuned, Claw 6 out.